XAI has given you access to ROC API. They've also given you $25 free credit. So I thought let's make a video explaining how to use XAI, the Grok API within your project. There are a lot of good things about it. And to be honest, this is one of the most comprehensively documented API launch that I've ever seen in the recent time. So I wanted to cover certain nuances about the Grok API. I do not know what is it to be called like X API, Grok API, but I get you get the point. Like this is Grok, which is from the Twitter company X from Elon Musk, the LLM company, and they've released the API access. Even though Grok has got the image generation capability, which is technically powered by Flux, that is not available as part of the API. And also recently Grok introduced Grok Vision, which is also not part of the API. So right now the API thing that we're going to deal with is really just the chat completion. And the good thing about this API is that it is compatible with OpenAI compatibility and also anthropic compatibility. So the very first thing that you have to do is you have to go to x.ai and from there you have to get the API key. So once you go to x.ai, you would see this very beautiful color outline, the neon lightest thing and go click try now. And after you click try now, you would be taken to this page where you have got, uh, you know, how many credits you have got. And um, right now, like I said, they give you $25 free credit. So you can try anything that you want. If you were to invite your team member, a lot of interesting things about this API. The very first thing that you have to do is go click the API key management and create a new API key and just give a name. Where are you going to use it? So let's say I want to say that this is the demo video. Okay. After I do this, the interesting point here is that, you know, when OpenAI launched, this was not the case, but right now you can do this with OpenAI as well. So you can give API access only to certain amount of models, which is very interesting. Like imagine you are working with a free freelancer and you want to let them use only, let's say whisper. You can do that with OpenAI. Right now, XAI does not have a lot of models, but still seems like a thought through process. So instead of enabling all the endpoints, you can just say, okay, I want to give only chat, embed, retrieve model, sample. Right now it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? You don't have a lot of models. What are you going to do with sample? I mean, embedding is kind of good, but chat completion is the main thing that you're going to deal with. I'm going to enable all the endpoints. Then you can also enable all the models. Right now it's got only one model, which is Grok Pitta. And it comes with a 128,000 context window, which is another good thing. The text generation is $5, the input and the output is $15, quite expensive to be honest. And you have got the image completion. So you've got all these things, but image completion is right now not available. Mostly in the future, you might get it. I'm going to enable all the models, save. After we do this, you get the API key. Never show your API key, the way you can, uh, not use this API key like after this, let's say you want to revoke the API key. All you have to do is go here, click this, delete the API key. That's it. That's all it is. And you're successfully done. Now, after you've got the API key, it's very simple. I'll share the Google Colab notebook with you for you to play with this. All you have to do is pip install open AI and uh, go set up the API key as part of your environment variable. I'm just showing it to you here, but you can add it as secret add it to your environment variable, whatever you want to do, depending upon the operating system, you can do it. Then it's literally few lines of code, import OS from OpenAI, import OpenAI. And this is to get the API key from your environment variable. Then you create a client where it is OpenAI and the API key and the base URL. So this is the only place where you're going to make change and everything is literally, you can keep the same. Like if you have got a production grade, open AI application. I mean, you're not going to use it while this is in beta I means let's be honest, but if you were to switch, the switch is ridiculously easy. So all you have to do is go here, change the base URL and the API key you're done and dusted. So here you have got API key XAI, XAI API key, and then the base URL. And then we are going to use completions here. Like I said, at the start, um, select the model in this case, right now you've got only one model. The role, your grok, a chatbot designed to inspire positivity in human life. That's that's my own words. Then the role, user, what is the user sending? My life is S H star T. I don't know what does it mean. It I think it let's hope it understands what does it mean. What do I do? And then it gave you a very big answer. And uh, one thing I noticed is like it took about like 17 seconds. I'm not sure how the latency is. I would probably wait for artificial analysis review. 
um, the benchmark to see if, what is what is the kind of speed difference it is there. But here, if you see the response is quite elaborate as well. Hey there, friend. It sounds like you're going through a really tough time. I'm sorry to hear that. Here are a few steps you might want to consider feeling better. Talk to someone, small steps, nature and movement, gratitude break, practice, create a routine, uh, explore hobbies. Oh, that's interesting. Consider professional help. Remember, it's okay not to be okay. Anyways, it's very interesting to see what they're doing. So this is the very simplest format of how you can get started with XAI API. I mean, what, you like you were five minutes in, in this video and you would have already had the first API call made with XAI or Grok API. There are a lot more nuances to it. Like, like that's the second part that I wanted to cover. Go to the home page of this uh, developer portal. And one thing that you can actually see here is that you can go here and uh, see the documentation. If you see the documentation, there are very interesting aspects to the documentation I wanted to highlight. One, they also show that how you can do um, function calling, which probably will do separately as a separate video. I want this to be like the easiest one. The thing that I wanted to highlight here is that this is a model and uh, you can actually use this model with uh, two endpoints. Um, let, let me show you like two types of integration. One, you can have one, you can make it like a normal curl call. Okay. So you have the curl, um, you can go call it as a curl call. And then you can, uh, in fact, uh, make that into a HTTP request, like as an endpoint, you can do that. But what is interesting is that they've got this open AI API integration with JavaScript, open AI, uh, SDK, sorry, SDK compatibility, then open AI Python SDK compatibility. Then you have got Anthropic SDK compatibility for JavaScript and Anthropic SDK compatibility for Python. Like I said, it's a very interesting decision that they've made. And this compatibility means that a lot of people could easily try out this particular API on um, production grade applications where people have already got open AI and Anthropic, even if they're not going to implement as part of production grade application, it's very easy for somebody to believe this and then start using it in the program. You don't have to make a ton of changes to have to make this happen. So that's very interesting. The second thing that I found interesting is that if you go to chat completions, there is one interesting variable called system fingerprint. Uh, I might be a little outdated. I'm not sure how many of them are doing this. But if you go see what is the system fingerprint. So system fingerprint is a combination of two things. See, first of all, let me to be, uh, to be honest, if you use open AI endpoint, after a point, people just start complaining that, you know, the GPT-4 model is lazy. And we have seen the same complaint with Claude 3.5 sonnet. People are like, okay, there is like, they've nerfed it, uh, they've lobotomized it, they've made it stupid. A lot of these complaints come in. Why? Because when you hit a model through an API endpoint, unless until it's an open source model or open weights model, you don't have any idea what kind of changes they've done to the model. So it's always like a confusion whether they, they did something to the model or it says that we got used to the model's high quality. So our benchmark has changed, like the baseline has changed. What they have done, interesting. Let me know if there is anybody else doing this. What XAI has done interesting is they have introduced a something called system fingerprint. At first I thought like this is to identify AI generated content, but that's not the case. So system fingerprint is a combination of two things. It is a unique configuration of the model and the backend and the fingerprint changes when any modification is made in one of these two. This is excellent. To be honest, I, I, I believe somebody else is doing, I hope more people would do this thing because now you know that there is something that has changed either in the models backend or in the configuration, like the setting, like, either the backend or the model itself has changed. And that is very easy for you to figure out just from the system fingerprint. So I'm very, very happy that if there is something like system fingerprint exists. I don't know how many of you have deployed machine learning models in production, but when we deploy machine learning models in production, one of the things that we like to do, we love to do, we usually do as a best practice is to do model monitoring. So you want to measure how the model's performance is against real world prediction over a period of time. So you know when to retrain the machine learning model. There are metrics like model drift to calculate the same thing. So model monitoring as a thing is quite difficult in the world of LLMs because you have no clue what kind of changes your model goes through. But now with this system fingerprint, you probably can have a little bit of track of, for example, what is happening. 
so you can have uh, let's say a base a set of benchmarks like internal benchmarks you can use a system fingerprint and measure it against it and then you can see okay now probably like the fingerprint is changing the benchmark is changing so you there is a way for you to slightly establish the causality of what is happening but either way i'm pretty happy that this exists and again you can see the responses there are like a couple of uh, interesting things there like if you go to the chat completions and you see the example so this is the example for 200 so there are certain things that you would see uh, like for example you can get lock props i have not played with lock props yet uh, but you can get lock props which is which is another good thing like i think i've already told on multiple videos uh, the way next word prediction happens is like there's a lot of words that get selected uh, then one is like words are sampled out and the top one gets selected and uh, with log props like you can do a lot of uh, fun things and um, yeah it's it's pretty interesting to see tool choices null uh, right now we do not have any tools we have not given any tools but i want to make follow up videos where we have tools uh, the same thing is happening here so you can go see here when you see this generation at the end of it you can see was there a limit refusal like let's say you wanted something to be generated like uh, for 500 tokens but you give only 128 tokens so there will be like a limit refusal what is the role the role of the response back is an assistant and audio was there an audio no audio I, I don't know why they've got audio maybe there is going to be tts not sure function call tool calls none so i would like to explore the api more but for now go claim your 25 dollars unless until uh if you do i think you need to have a twitter account for this so yeah if you don't have a twitter account i'm i'm really sorry like you're not going to miss out on a lot of things but if you have got a twitter account grab your 25 dollars experiment a lot of things and uh, we'll also experiment more on this let me know what you feel about this api contract documentation schema and everything else see you in another video happy prompting